Come one, come all, welcome back. It is I, Single Player Gamer, here with another video for you. Another Splinterlands video. Another reading video. The finale. All right. We are reading this. The Secret of Praetoria. Phase 2, White Paper Reveal. Part 5, Ancient Ruins here. This is the land gameplay, my NFT investment gameplay, white paper, meaning the information about that's not in the game yet. If any of this sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit that like button if you haven't already and subscribe to this channel. We are trying to reach 1,500 subscribers. We are nearing it. Shout out to everybody who is subscribed already and shout out to all of the brand new subscribers and welcome in. We are back again. This is the finale. Of the phase two white paper reveal part five ancient ruins what are ruins ruins who knows let's see <clears throat> ancient ruins and the secret of praetoria hints of a great and powerful secret have been left behind by the ancient peoples that lived on praetoria the ruins of seven monstrous structures have been found by the explorers Ooh. One in each of the seven territories that divide the continent. Ooh, interesting. It seems as though they were purposely destroyed long ago by the ancient inhabitants. Perhaps they thought their power was too great and didn't want to risk it falling into the wrong hands. Okay. Heedless of the warnings, the new crop of explorers on Praetoria have begun the process of unlocking the secrets of these ancient ruins once contained hold up in their lairs, which have come to be known as runology towers. The leading scientists and wizards of each territory are diligent, diligently studying every clue as to how to begin to reconstruct the, these massive structures and figure out how to unlock the power they once held. And they need to do it before their rivals in the other territories do, lest the power be used against them. Okay. So this is the lore. I'm trying to, let me reread this again because this is sound like an active paragraph. Let me visualize this. Heedless of warnings, the new crop of explorers on Praetoria have begun the process of unlocking the secrets at these ancient ruins once contained. Hold up in their lairs, which have come to be known as Renology Towers, the leading scientists and wizards, okay, of each territory, okay, are diligently studying every clue as to how to begin to reconstruct these massive structures and figure out how to unlock the power they once held, and they need to do it before their rivals in the other territories do it, lest the power be used against them. All right, so whoever finds what the secret of Praetoria is, I guess that territory is going to get a buff, maybe? Okay, interesting. That's very cute lore, I'll say. Very cute. Very nice image in my head. All right. Each of the seven territories of Praetoria contains an ancient ruins. Players who own land within each territory will cooperate with each other to finish the massive research and construction project to rebuild the ancient ruins and be the first to unlock the secret of Praetoria. Players can construct a Renology Tower building on any available plot they own, stake worker cards on it, and provide trifold runes to each research points. I mean, to earn research points. The more production provided by the worker cards and the higher level of the building, the more research points the player will earn per hour. Okay, so research. We're getting research now. But they're going to make this hard. They're going to make this real hard to get this research soon. It's going to be... A lot more steps to get it if if they actually do this white paper, you know, to what it is, because this is subject to change. The research points are non-transferable and simply accumulate in players' accounts. Once the sum of all research points earned from all runology towers in a territory passes a certain threshold, the first phase of the project and to reconstruct the ancient ruins in the territory will be in. I really think it's totally whack that I can't transfer research points. From magical lands. So, I mean, but I guess this is about the secret of Praetoria land stuff. I guess, is that what's magical about land? I can't transfer research points? Okay. Ancient ruins. Reconstruction. 
Once the construction phase begins, players will be able to contribute resources and worker cards to help complete the construction. Just like with any building construction, the secret project will require a certain amount of production to complete. Any player, even those who don't own any land, may stake cards to work on the ancient ruins construction project in any territory, and there is no limit to the number of cards or the amount of production that any player may contribute or that may be contributed in total. One difference, however, is that only max level cards may work on the ancient ruins construction project. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, well, I guess we can get um, $9.98 max level regular foil Chaos Legion cards. I was about to say, whoa, what? But okay, wow, that means a lot of cards cannot work on Ancient Ruin Construction Project. Interesting. The project is too dangerous and difficult for lower level workers. Additionally, worker cards on the Ancient Ruins Reconstruction Project are not planned to need food or stake DC in order to provide production as they would on a normal player-owned plot. Instead, they will be powered by staked SPS tokens that will be able to be delegated to the project in each territory. More on that below. There are not planned to be any boosts to the production of, I mean, for Ancient Ruins, construction, or any terrain bonuses or penalties, so all worker cards will contribute their base production rate. Oh, it's pretty weak. Oh my gosh. I mean, what, base production, like, I don't know. Oh, base production rate, I guess. No, that's, that's, that's not weak, but I mean, I don't know. There's, why no boost? Why no boost? Just why? In addition to workers, large amounts of various resources will need to be provided in order to complete the construction. The resources can be provided at any time during the construction phase of the project and do not need to be provided all up front like a typical building construction. Once all of the resources have been provided and the worker cards have contributed enough production, the construction phase will end and it will go back to the, the research phase. Once enough research points have been earned in the territory to hit the next threshold, then the next phase of construction will begin. Please note that Runology Tower buildings will still be producing research even while the construction phase is ongoing. So if enough research has been earned in the territory to reach the next threshold, when the current construction phase ends, then the next construction phase will begin right away. It is currently unknown how many phases will need to be completed before the ancient ruins are fully reconstruction and the great secret of Pretoria is unlocked. But scholars estimate that it may take as long as a couple of years before the first territory is able to complete the whole thing. Initial research does indicate that there will be smaller but still substantial benefits for completing each phase of the re reconstruction project for the players who have contributed. Now that does not sound fun. So it's going to take who knows how long until we actually get to phase two. And it says right here, the scholars estimated it may take as long as a couple of years before the first territory is able to complete the whole thing. I guess, I don't know. Why should it take a couple of years? I guess, I mean, is it because it's a community effort? I mean, it's not like we have millions of players on Splinterlands. I'm just trying to figure out with the small player base that Splinterlands even owns, they're making it take years to do whatever. I mean, I've already been waiting f since 2022 with this land, man. And it's 2024, man. You're telling me the first territory won't be 110. Well, this is the white paper. This ain't even in the game. This is written. It's written. It will take a couple of years. As long as a couple of years before the first territory is able to complete. Oh my gosh. A couple of more, a couple of years? It's been two years? Never mind. Ooh. This this is a live reaction. Single player reacts to Praetoria. All right. SPS staking. As mentioned above, worker cards on the Ancient Ruins Reconstruction Project are planned to be powered by players' delegated. I mean, powered by players delegating staked SPS tokens to the project in each territory. Any player, whether or not they own any land in the territory, will be able to delegate their staked SPS to the Ancient Ruins Reconstruction Project in that territory and earn the requ requisite rewards. 
The amount of production contributed by the worker cards on the project in each territory will receive a multiplier based on the amount of staked SPS delegated to the production in that territory. The formula ha is planned to be similar to the one used currently for reward points from rigged battles where more staked SPS delegated will always increase the multiplier, but with diminishing returns. Here goes the last paragraph of the white paper. Let's see. Contribution score. All contributions to the Ancient Ruins Reconstruction Project, including research tokens, resources, delegated SPS, and production from worker cards, will provide varying amounts of contribution score, CS, relative to the value of each type of contribution. This will create a single number that represents the total contribution to the project in each territory by each player. The Ancient Ruins are the only source of gemstones on Praetoria, and will also be the primary source of totem fragments. The more CS a player earns by contributing to the project, the more chances they will have to find a gemstone and or totem fragment. And I don't like that it's just by chance. Like, okay, you're just, you're barely increasing my rewards by loot box randomness. You know, it's not like, well, if you have... 20,000 contribution score, that's when you get a freaking gray gemstone or something. And then when you have 100,000, then you get a freaking purple gemstone. No, it's like, it's all just uh, by chance. Oh, well, the more you got SPS, you got stick, the higher your chances, the more, you know, like, golly, we're in, what? Ugh. Additionally, CS will be used to determine players' position on the leaderboard within the territory and the whole continent for the purposes of earning prefix titles. At the completion or each phase of each phase of reconstruction, including the final phase when the secret is unlocked, the rewards that players receive will be relative to their contribution score as compared to other players' contribution scores in the territory. All right, let me compare that to the other ones. That's 12 minutes. This is 10 minutes shorter than the last two videos. So I appreciate you all for watching. This is the Secret of Pretoria white paper reveal. This is the finale. What do I think so far? A little mini recap. Um, this is not what I thought land would be when I bought it in 2021 and spent 180 bucks. But I mean, Splinterlands company only got $180 from me directly for their land. Um, so I'm not really like just totally angry. It was up to me that I went ahead and bought even more land that's from players. You know, I'm the one that invests in players and in Splinterlands ecosystem. That's why I have 18 lands. But I mean, the first nine I bought, that was just 180 bucks. I just spent 108 friggin' 160 bucks on a Tridale land pretty much like, bruh. I'm just saying like, so I'm not mad. It's just, this is not as exciting as I thought it would be when I actually spent my money, you know? I I impressed over that 180 bucks I spent over two years ago. I just did not. I mean, this is kind of the direction I like. It did take much longer than I thought, and we're even not even here yet. Just the white paper, but am I excited? No, because it just seemed like a lot of taxes and fees. But I appreciate y'all for watching. Make sure y'all tune into my next video. Make sure y'all hit that like button if you haven't already, and subscribe. Let me know what do you think about these white papers. All right, I'll see y'all in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Peace out.